filming an intro because I need an intro. I forgot to film it. I'm a professional. What is up, everybody? Every now and then, I like to drop in a quick Q&A on this channel. This time, Mary Spender is joining me and you gave us loads of questions. So let's get to it. Let's smash cut to a week ago in a car park. Voice pace, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? Why do you like John Mayer and his gear? I like John Mayer. I don't... I, I think people think I like his gear just because he's John Mayer, but I, I don't own any of his gear or any of that. This is all the PRS guitar this is the PRS thing. controversy, isn't it? What's um, it called? The, the Sky something? I'll put a picture up on screen the, of what it is. Um, that's how much I know. <laughs> um, the it's silver, a PRS The strap. Silver Sky. Silver Sky. The Silver Sky, not the Super Eagle. Yeah, which was his previous one, right? So I'm going to come out with something called the Super Sky, <laughs> and obviously it's going to win. No, um... Uh, I fell in love with John Mayer's tone when I was 18 and his style of guitar playing, but I don't own any of his gear. I don't own a Strat anymore. Um, so I, and I don't own any of his amps or anything. I've never played his amps. So... You played one of his guitars at NAMM though. Uh, was it something like a crazy $15,000 acoustic or something like that? Oh yeah, I played, yeah, for the hits. <laughs> 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 no, um, I did play that and it was, I you know couldn't tell whether it sounded good or not because it was the environment so, so of Nam. Loud. yeah but that was just it, like it was a fifteen thousand pound guitar like mm -hmm. i'm gonna pick that up and play it if it's just if it's just on a wall you have to really yeah some people in the comments were like you wouldn't even dare we're in a car park we're in a car park <laughs> <laughs> so i i love john mayer um and i i'm sure his gear is great but it's it it wouldn't suit me no at all. no I like his strap thing that came out. I like the shape of it, except the headstock, which is really ugly. It's flipped it's over. It's like isn't a reverse it? kind of and flattened and elongated on one side. Yeah. It looks strange. It the has, rest of it, it looks has fine, more though. of a cutaway. He keeps doing that on his PRSs because um, he's got massive hands. Mm -hmm. He seems like a person who should win all the awards. Well, he if did. That makes sense. He's won seven Grammys. I think he's just a very. Even if people don't like his music, he's very consistent in what he does. So, like, he writes pop songs. Mm -hmm with a bluesy element and he writes good songs. I presume this is about music education. What was your uni slash conservatoire? Yeah, conservatoire. Conservatoire experience like. That's um, a word I haven't experienced before. So I went to university, I didn't go to a conservatoire. Conservatoires are like Royal Academy, oh, Guildhall, okay. um, Trinity. I didn't go there. I did an academic degree in classical music, which was intense and not related to guitar at all, um, but kept playing it and had some time to practice while I was at university. Um, but yeah, I played the viola, so. Not, not, not guitar Not guitar, all. no, I've never had a guitar lesson other than one from Zane Carney over Skype. Um, so it was very different to what I'm doing now and it was great, I met a lot of great musicians, a lot of friends, um, not many industry contacts because it was the wrong industry for me, mm -hmm. but I grew up in that time, so it was quite important for me. <laughs> I went to the ICMP in London. Really? And I made a hash of it. Because I was... How old were you when you went? I to, was 19. I was 16, so I came straight what? out of school and oh went straight to the Guitar Institute, as it probably was called back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I wanted to do was play heavy metal. Mm. And I, it, the adverts and things kind of... This is not, not their fault, by the way. All the adverts and things make it look as though you're going to go in there, come out a rock star and... Yeah. get all these contacts and things like that and I guess just I was, wasn't was ready to mm. do because it's, it's like cramming 900 years of music popular music into nine months because it was yeah. the one year course as well right it's so I think there is that sort of illusion especially with the universities now especially them being nine grand a year in, this yeah. is just obviously in the UK obviously in America they are 50 grand a year or yeah. something crazy but you have to go in and you have to know that you're not going to come out and just like get your dream job mm -hmm, in yeah. whatever whatever space you're in. Um, I contemplated going, so even if I finished my academic degree well and got a first or whatever and then was doing well in performance and viola, I would then still have to go and do qualifications at conservatoires and really specialize in viola. And that was never gonna happen. Um, so, yeah, my friends who have done that now are professional musicians, but there aren't that many of them. Most most have gone into teaching. Um, it was a, it was a good foundation. It was a good sort of finish to my classical upbringing, but mm -hmm. but no. And, and it's it's one of the reasons why I'm still only really um, 
I'm still learning how to improvise because classical music doesn't really encourage it at all. It's no. much more in the jazz field. You I read wish I'd studied off, jazz. You read everything off charts in classical, don't you? Uh, scores. Yeah. yeah. Like like proper notation. You learn to write music and you compose um, using you know, all the clefs. <laughs> <laughs> when I went to the institute, it was it seemed like a really cool thing to do. Yeah. But ultimately, you need to go to one of those places knowing what you, you want to get out of it. Nose. Have I? I've got coffee on my nose too. I've got coffee on my nose. <laughs> it's these cups. We've both got coffee on our noses. Cheers. Cheers. It's not really coffee in here, it's whiskey. <laughs> yeah, because when, when I was 16, I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. So my point is, is that it works going to those kind of things. You make a lot of friends musically. I didn't because I was too young, really. Yeah. Yeah, you need to know what you want out of it. And if you don't put the effort in when you're there, don't expect to come out of it with flying colours. No, not at all. And even if you even if you do really well there, it doesn't guarantee you an audience, does it? Like, it's really... Um... It's interesting. I wonder what it's like. If I was to go back there now, whether they'd, in, uh, whether they'd introduce things like YouTube into it, into the music business side of things. I think they would. I think they'd introduce social media. I've, got, I've had friends who have done sort of management classes and stuff at BIM, um, and social media is super important, as we, as we both yeah. know. How would you combine having a job and being in a touring band? Um, well, it depends what kind of touring band. So my level of touring is, is once a year for five days. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's quite so easy with, with <laughs> annual leave. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's, it's hard to do everything at 100%. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm try I'm literally doing that this month. I'm, I'm working my day job, um, still making all my own YouTube videos in the evenings and then going on tour, um, in a few days. Where are you playing? I am playing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, Glasgow, Manchester, Nottingham, Bristol, London. Cy I used to have that mountain bike. Anyway. Cyclist. <laughs> Car park. Both of us distracted. <laughs> um, uh, yes, so I'm yeah going on tour and quite excited, but also like nervous. So this is your first headline tour, yeah? My first headline tour, yeah, ever. And I've been gigging for twelve years, so long time coming. Long time coming. Mm -hmm. I will put a link to Mary's tour in the description, and um, yeah, you should all go. If you're in the UK. If you're in the UK. I'm sorry about any other countries that are. Are completely offended that I'm not. <laughs> I'm not making it to uh, Brazil expensive. just yet. Yeah, it's expensive, um, and you know, I, I it, although I see like comments from people in other countries where they're like, "Come to, come see us, come see us." Like, it could just be one person that wants to see me yeah. in that city. So, <laughs> organizing a whole show is quite is quite hard. And um, yeah, I'm working with the promoter on this tour, but I don't have a booking agent, so it really is me sort of pushing them to give me gigs. Come to Mary's tour. Uh, again, the link will be in the description. Have that. A link will be in the description. Yeah, yeah. come see Mary. She's cool. <laughs> Thanks. You're cool too. <laughs> we always do interviews in strange places. Yeah, so. we, we're always on a park bench, <laughs> or now we're in a car park. Next, where are we going to be? What's the next time we're going to meet? Nam. Um, Nam. So me and Mary are going to go and use the zip wire behind us. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> not in these shoes. <laughs> and uh, thank you for watching. Go check out Mary's channel. And go see Mary on tour. Yes, please. I'm not sure when this video will be out, but it should be around the same time. I haven't done a Q&A in quite a while, so it was nice to have a guest. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining me in this car park thank in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, and thank you for watching. <laughs> Mine is more like throwing spaghetti at a wall mm -hmm. and seeing what sticks. I... Uh, I generally, I used to write a lot with a drum machine, like Superior Drummer, just looping around with a metronome and stuff. These days I tend not to do that, because if you have a drum beat in there already, you tend to write riffs which are based around that drum beat. 